So I'm gonna do a $100 performance build on a Predator 212. 8,500 RPM flywheel, advanced timing, bump the compression, port the head, ratio rockers, 18 pound valve springs, fortify the rod, jet the carb, performance air filter, performance air filter adapter, remove the governor, internal and external, and plug all the holes in the block, and maybe a few other things, all for $100 in parts or less. So I'm going to install this Predator 212, totally stock, with governor on this Azusa frame, and I'll take it out for zero to 30 in top speed run to get a baseline. And then we'll do the $100 Predator 212 performance build, and then we'll remount it on the frame and take it back out, and we'll see what the difference is in zero to 30 in top speed with the $100 performance Predator versus the totally stock Predator 212. Let's install this Predator 212 on the Azusa frame. Stock Predator 212 on, take it out for a 0 30 and top speed, get a baseline. <laughs> 0 to 30, stock Predator 212 on the Azusa bike. What the first zero to 30 did did it in 6.32 first time around 6.32 was stock predator let me do it again to back it up all right second attempt stock predator zero to 30. Oh, I did it a lot faster this time. 5.75. 5.75. So let me do top speed. Okay, we did a top speed around the neighborhood of 38.13. 38.13. Okay, did a top speed of 38.13 and 5.750 to 30. Let me zip tie that governor and take it out for another top speed run. That way it'll be a better comparison when we do the mods. So there we go, got a zip tie in the governor spring. Now let me go do another top speed run. Okay, top speed run, stock predator with the governor zip tie. Okay, top 
speed was 50.24. 50.24. That's actually pretty good. Stock Predator with the governor zip tied. Predator 212 with the governor did 38.13 top speed and a 6.32 and a 5.75, 0 to 30. And then I zip tied the governor and it did a top speed of 50.24. That's pretty good for the gear ratio that's on the bike with those small tires. And then I didn't do 0 to 30 again because the governor really doesn't kick in anyway until you get up there in RPM. So anyway, so now let me throw on those $100 mods and we'll see if we can pick up any top speed and quicken the bike up a little bit. Anyway, okay. so there's a recoil cover. All right, so I'm gonna pull off this, all the throttle linkage, get it out of my way so I can pull that gas tank off. All right, get the linkage off, okay, so pull off this gas tank. Governor springs, don't need none of that stuff. Pull off this governor arm. Okay, there's that. Pull the flywheel off. shielding and stuff off. Okay, that. Use valve cover off. All right. Pull the carb off so I can rejet it. All right. Pull the side cover off here so I can get that governor wheel out of there. So loosen up these adjusters here. All right. Pull out this cam. Pull out this oil sensor. Pull the oil sensor out of the block. Okay, there you go, oil sensor. Let's pull this head off. Might as well pop this piston out of here. Okay. Might as well pop the crank out while we're at it. Pull the rest of this governor linkage out of here. All right, there's that rod. So there we go, let me plug those two holes. Clean these out. So the RTV will stick in there. Put my one quarter by 20 bolt in here, and these will tap themselves. I'll put a little RTV on there to seal it up. Okay, so there we go, there's that one. Throw the one in here. Okay, so now let me pop up this pin for this governor gear. All 
right. There we go. Some more TV on here. So there's that one. Got both those holes plugged with the button bolts, one quarter by 20. Tap this thing out. The 7 16 tap by 20. And then we should be good to go. Start putting it back together. Okay, throw this 7 16 by 20 in there. So there we go. Got the OEL sensor holes filled. All right. So now let me throw that crank in there and polish up that rod. While I'm here, I might as well knock the gear off of this. Okay, so now that I got all the governor bolts sealed up and the crank in there, I can polish up this rod, polish up these rod beams. So now I'm going to use an old racer's trick and polish the rod beams to eliminate some of the stress risers or potential cracks in the um, rod beams or areas that it could potentially crack because of the casting. They also say when you're polishing the beam, you always go long ways. Don't go crossways when you're polishing or sanding because you don't want to cause any more potential stress cracks or microscopic stress cracks. So you always go along the beam. So you can see the ridges in the one that's not polished. And that right there is potentially where it could break. It might have like a microscopic crack or stress riser right there. So on the polished side, or the polished rod, you polish all that out, so it's just nice and smooth. You don't really take off much material at all, just enough to get these ridges off of here. So they say it also reduces the weight of the rod, so that helps. So you can see the polished beam on the left is a lot more smooth, so less chance of a stress crack or a stress riser. And on the one on the right, you can see the ridge. Install the rod and the piston. Okay, so now we put the rod cap on. Throw some oil on here. Throw some oil on the bolts. You could add some more strength by adding some high tensile strength rod bolts, ARP rod bolts, but you might as well just go ahead and buy a billet rod. You're gonna start spending money on rod bolts and stuff. But when you're on a hundred dollar budget, you have to do what you have to do. Okay, I'm gonna torque this down. Torque down the rod bolts. Drop in this stock cam. Okay, there we go. Got the marks lined up. Also button this side up. Throw some oil on this bearing. Let's button her up. Snug these down lightly so I can torque them. Now, install my crank holding tool that way I can lap that flywheel in without the crank moving around and I can torque it so now I can install the flywheel on here so on this build I got a cast aluminum flywheel which is rated at 8500 rpm and the cool part about it is it's only 39 bucks so it adds a little safety plus it's quite a bit lighter than the stock flywheel 
Also going to add seven degrees of timing with the seven degree flywheel key. But first I'm going to lap this flywheel in with some um, valve grinding compound. So I'm going to add some valve grinding compound on here and we will lap this flywheel in. Oh yeah, so you can see a nice mark there where the flywheel's lapped in. Oh, let me clean all this compound off of here. Add my seven degree flywheel key. So there we go. Nice and flush with the shaft there. So the flywheel will slide on. Yeah, this flywheel is super light, so maybe it'll rub up quicker. Might be a little more snappy with this flywheel. Ready? Okay. Torque this flywheel down. Torque this flywheel down in one smooth motion. So I'm going to set the coil gap to about 30 on this one. I'm going to set the coil gap with one of my sleeves that I already have measured. It's about 30 thousandths. Alrighty, so there we go. There's that. Cast aluminum flywheel. 8500 RPM flywheel. 39 bucks. So I'm going to port the head. So I'm just going to do some very light port work on here because it's running the stock carburetor and you need to keep that port velocity up. So I'm just gonna smooth out all the transitions in here, like up on the port floor, up under the seat, where it's really rough. Okay, now I'm gonna install these 18 pound valve springs. Big difference compared to the stock spring. The one on the left, the 18 pound. The one on the right, the stock spring. The stock ones are quite a bit lighter. There we go. Install the head, and this engine already came with a 10 thousandths head gasket. So I'm gonna throw another one on there, 10 thousandths. Push rods. So you definitely see a difference in the 1.3 on the left versus the standard stock ones on the right, the one to one ratio. Look how much shorter they are. You can see they are on this end quite a bit shorter. Okay, so this is valve lash. So set that one right there, three thousandths. All right, install the valve cover. Little carburetor jet kit on here. Have the low speed, the emulsion tube, and the main. So I think I'm gonna throw a 35 main, 35, 26, 45, but a 35 main because of the altitude up here. on here. Those adapter on here. Okay, so there we go. Carbon stall. Jetted carb. As well throw the recoil back on it.
Let's pop this air filter on here. Throw the muffler back on here. I could throw a header pipe on here, but that would be breaking out of the budget. So maybe I'll put that on there after we see how fast it goes with the muffler. Throw some oil in this thing. So throw this tank on here and we should be good. Okay, so there we go. Slow this thing back on the bike and see what it does. Okay, got the $100 Predator on there. Have to be 50.24 and 5.75, 030. We'll see what she does. Okay, it already knocked the second off. Went from 5.75 to 4.77. It's definitely a lot quicker. Let me try it again. Back it up. Zero to 30, second attempt. Okay, definitely feels a lot quicker. Okay, I did 4.72 this time around, 4.72. We'll see if we can beat it in top speed. We'll see how much this muffler holds it back. And I think that's the limiting factor now is the uh, stock exhaust. Top speed run, $100 Predator. Felt like it was faster. We did a top speed of 53.35. So the $100 Predator build did 53.35, but I think that muffler is holding it back. So I'm gonna break the budget and put a $30 header pipe on it and go out and do another top speed run and we'll see how restrictive that stock muffler is. So I'm gonna throw this pipe on there and we'll see how restrictive that stock muffler really is. Okay, top speed run, $100 Predator with a header pipe. Definitely sounds faster. 58.76, that just shows how restrictive that pipe is. Gained five miles an hour just with a header pipe. Okay, the $100 Predator build did 58.76, but I cheated and put a header pipe on it. So it gained five miles an hour with a header pipe. So that just shows how restrictive the stock exhaust is. Anyway, so the $100 Predator went from 50.24 with the governor zip tied in the stock carb to 53.35. So it gained three miles per hour. And it was a lot quicker, 4.77 and 4.72. So it gained a second from zero to 30. Definitely a lot more snappy. 
a lot more quick. But then, to prove how restrictive that stock exhaust is, I threw a header pipe on it and it gained five more miles an hour. It's 58.76. So it just shows that stock exhaust is super restrictive.